The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, despite the summer-like weather this week, I am declaring that summer is officially over. Labor Day is past. Summer vacations are wrapping up. Ready or not, kids are going back to school. My nephew out in Arizona just had his first day of kindergarten recently at a Catholic school out there, and I was talking to him on the phone. How do you like your new school? What's your favorite part? How do you like your uniform? It's ugly and stupid, he told me. (laughs) So God bless him as he starts school, and God bless his teacher. I think starting school is not easy for students and teachers alike. You know, maybe that's why there was another kid who was beginning, getting ready for his first day of kindergarten, and he was a little bit nervous about it. And as they were getting ready to leave for school the first day, his dad could see the worried look on his face. What's wrong, son? Dad, how long do I have to go to school? So you're 18, son, said the, said the dad. That's what I had to do. That's what everyone has to do. Well, as he got to the gates of the school, the son waved goodbye to his dad. Then he turned around and gave him a great big hug. You will remember to pick me up when I turn 18, won't you, Dad? (laughs) As hard as starting school can be for a student, it can be equally hard for a teacher. I have such respect for teachers. Being a teacher today is not an easy job. You know, you can be weighed and criticized for anything you say or do. Uh, People have very different uh, opinions about what it constitutes a good education. Sometimes students will show up to the classroom without basic needs, uh, and maybe seemingly without the support of parents. And so many teachers do heroic work to get students ready for a good education. And thank you to all of you who who contributed to the back-to-school program, helping teachers and students get ready to go back to school. The challenge of being a teacher is maybe why one kid came back from his first day of school and his parents said, well, well, what did you learn today? Well, we learned, we talked about our favorite words, said the student, and my teacher went first. She said her three favorite words were June, July, and August. (laughs) I have such respect for teachers, whoever engages in teaching, teachers in public schools, teachers in Catholic schools, private schools, homeschool parents, It's such a sacred task, passing on wisdom, passing on the faith to the next generation. It's so important. I mean, it might be the most important thing that each generation does. And as much as you might get criticized by others being a teacher, you're also held to a higher standard by God. That's what God says to Ezekiel today. He says, Ezekiel, if you're going to take on the role of being a prophet, being a teacher of Israel, then I'm going to hold you to a higher standard. I'm going to hold you responsible, not just for your own words and actions, but for the words and actions of your pupils, those who are learning from you. If you're supposed to teach them something and you fail to do so, and they end up on a road of destruction, I'm going to hold you responsible for that as well. Talk about an incredible responsibility. That's why maybe St. James in the Bible says, not many of you should be teachers, brothers and sisters, because those of us who teach will be judged more severely. I'm sure he's talking primarily about those who teach the faith. I feel like I should stop stop talking before all the wonderful teachers and catechists that we have in our faith formation program run away because we have so many wonderful teachers, people who are really passionate about passing on the faith. 
And it's a challenge to get enough catechists sometimes. We were really scrambling this week to find enough because it, 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 and many people maybe feel a little unprepared. They say, well, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I know the faith well enough myself to teach others. And fair enough, you, you want a basic understanding of what you're teaching if you're going to teach. But uh, I would say don't be afraid if you're tapped on the shoulder to consider it because don't forget that teaching is often the best way to learn. And if you can remember like three things, you're going to be a great teacher. First of all, remember that it's uh, more important what you do and who you are than what you say. People are going to forget what you say tomorrow, but people will never forget who you are. I can think of so many great teachers uh, in my life growing up that I just remember who they are, and they were so influential on me, really by the way they lived their life. And the same is true of, of teachers, the same is true of parents and grandparents. If you really want an influence on your children and grandchildren, especially when it comes to the faith, Yes, it's important to teach the faith, to live the faith at home, but it's so much more important who you are, that you live the faith authentically, that you are living uh, as a person of faith in your own life, in private as well as public, alone and with others. The example of your life is going to be so much more important than anything you say. The second thing to remember, if you're going to be a teacher, is that so much of teaching is just going over the basics again and again and again. St. Paul in our reading today says, you know, we have all these laws in the Old Testament that we have to learn and remember, hundreds of laws. But if you can just remember the one basic law, love your neighbor as yourself, everything else is summed up in that. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. It's all summed up in the phrase, he says, love your neighbor as yourself. St. Paul probably learned this lesson from the rabbis who taught him. In fact, in the Jewish Talmud, there's a story about these two famous rabbis who lived right before the time of St. Paul and the time of Jesus, just a few decades before. And at the time, there was a Gentile man who was thinking of converting to Judaism. But he said, I'm only going to convert to Judaism if I can find a rabbi who can teach me the whole Torah, the whole law, while standing on one foot. And so the man went to one of the famous rabbis of the day, Shammai. And she said, and Shammai heard this request, and he hit him over the head and threw him out of the house. He said, that's ridiculous. Said, Why are you asking me something so ridiculous? But then he was undeterred, so he went to the other famous rabbi, Hillel. And he repeated the same request. And Hillel was a much more patient sage. And he thought about it, and he said, what is hateful to you... Do not do to your neighbor. That is the whole Torah. The rest is commentary. Go and study. And, you know, when it comes to our faith, love is always at the most basic thing. You can have all knowledge and understand all mysteries, but if you do not have love, you are nothing. Thirdly and finally, if you're going to be a teacher, uh, remember that... Uh, now I'm forgetting what my third point is. It's very important, very important. Um, that, oh yes, you always have to recognize your own need to learn again and again and again. Yeah, being a great teacher means always being a great learner, being a lifelong learner, always realizing that there's so much more to learn. No matter how much you know about a subject, there's always more that you don't know. And the wisest people, the best teachers are the ones who realize I need to learn myself. And that goes not just for teachers, it goes for all of us, especially when it comes to our faith. We have to be lifelong learners. We can never think we have it all figured out. And, you know, learning about the faith doesn't end when we make our first communion or we make our confirmation when we're young or when we turn 18. Uh, these days here in our diocese, we do confirmation now in the third grade. And there's some pros and cons to that, but one of the pros is to, it, it kind of makes us realize Learning about the faith has to be a lifelong task. Otherwise, you're going to end in the third grade, and that's not good enough. You know, we, we, sometimes we stop there, and we end up with a third grade understanding of the faith instead of realizing we have to continue to grow. We have to have an adult understanding of the faith when we're an adult so that we can deal with real-life problems that we deal with. And here at St. Michael's, we have so many opportunities to learn about the faith and to grow. 
How many of us pass by the kiosk that's in the gathering space where we have so many great little books and pamphlets and CDs? Deacon Eric does a great job replenishing those from time to time. There's always something new there to take and learn from. Or how many opportunities we have, especially as we begin the school year, to grow in our faith here in the parish. We have our, our women's Bible study, Walking with Purpose, that goes on Monday nights and Tuesday mornings. We have a men's uh, groups. We have uh, so many opportunities. Uh, and they seem to all be starting this week. On Wednesday, we're having the Alpha course again here in the parish. The Alpha course just goes over the basics of Christianity again and again and again. And if you've never gone to the Alpha course, or if you know someone who's really interested and has questions about faith or life, or just needs those basics, of, the Alpha course is the best thing I can recommend. And uh, really think about inviting someone. But maybe you've already done the Alpha Course. Maybe you're ready for something more. Uh, we're going to start in our parish something called Catholic Discussions. Chris Carmody, who we'll hear from a little bit later in this Mass, he's going to be on a monthly basis or so presenting different topics of the faith. And so it's actually beginning this Tuesday. Uh, he's going to be talking about the Mass, how we can understand the Mass better, one of the most basic things we do as Catholics. And so at noon that day and at 6.30 p.m., we'll be gathering... Check either one, and uh, we'll learn about the Mass. Maybe as the months go on, if topics interest you, come, come to some of the topics and learn more about the faith. So there's always opportunities to grow. I told people last week, don't, there's so many things we're doing, maybe don't do all of them unless you really want to, but maybe just pick one thing. If we all picked one area where we could grow uh, this school year, that would be so good for our community and for ourselves and for our families. I remember so many great teachers I had growing up. One of my great professors in college, he would always end one of, uh, many of his lectures by saying, long live students. And we would all say, long live professors, long live teachers. We today pray for all our students and all our professors and all our teachers, those who are engaged in this great work of education, those who seek to learn. At the end of this homily, I'd like to invite any teachers or students who are present and those also who are participating in our faith formation program, all our catechists, all our students there, please stand as we offer a blessing for you. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of body and mind and heart. You have sent the spirit of wisdom and knowledge to guide your people in all their ways. At the beginning of this new school year, we implore your mercy. Bless our students, teachers, and staff, that together we may grow in faith, hope, and love as we learn from you and each other how to follow your Son, Jesus. Expand the horizons of our minds that we may grow in wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Deepen our commitment to seek the truth of your ways and enliven our faith to reach out to those in need Glory and praise to you, Lord God, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen.